afternoon. Uh, um, my name's Jessica. I'm filling in for Gina the Cheese Whiz. Um, this is noon on Tuesday. And uh, today we're going to be talking about meat. Yeah. <laughs> and, Charcuterie. Um, Hannah, <laughs> Hannah Robertson. Right, Robert. That's correct. <laughs> I don't know. That's right. <laughs> she was my employee. I don't know why I'm questioning <laughs> memory of your last name um she with like prosciutto and jamon you get a little bit of sweetness too like sweet nutty which mm. you know is very complimentary to <laughs> a <laughs> natural pairing yeah it's a real natural pairing exactly yeah. yep like Sunny and Cher. Exactly. <laughs> Just like Sunny and Cher. <laughs> is, there, is there any particular pairings that you like to, like, are there any yeah. particular favorite uh, charcuterie pairings that you like with yeah. cheese? Or? I really, so whenever, a lot of times people come up to the counter and they'll ask, like, I, you know, I have some prosciutto, I have some cured salami, and I'm looking for a cheese to pair with it. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, like, Basically, all all cheese is going to pair pretty well with cured meat. Yeah. Like, they're, as I said, they go hand in hand. But um, depending on the, the, like, if you have some prosciutto, um, since it's going to be, like, a little sweeter, it has kind of a softer texture, you might want to pair that with something that's, like, a little drier, kind of that textural contrast, and a little bit more, like, piquant, like, a classic pairing, of course, is prosciutto and Parmigiano Reggiano. I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> so something that it's those funny are both... how they came up with that. Exactly. <laughs> Geniuses. <laughs> so that's also like a regional pairing because you know both from Italy. Cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> speaking of prosciutto, so I get people come in and they kind of use uh, at least at my shop. I don't know about your shop. Um, they kind of use prosciutto and jamon or serrano interchangeably. But that's, could you kind of explain the differences a little bit between uh, prosciutto and jamon? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for starters, they're regionally very different. So prosciutto is from Italy. Jamon um, Iberico and jamon serrano is from um, Spain. Um, I actually have them up here. I don't know if you guys can see, but the um, prosciutto is the one on <laughs> my right. <laughs> so your left. <laughs> Um, and then the jamon is on the other side there. And um, some other kind of key differences is that, um, so the pigs that are used for the jamon tend to be smaller pigs. Um, jamon iberico is a little bit different than the jamon serrano that we have up here because it has even more spe specifications that it has to fall under. It's, mm -hmm. a, um, it's a specific breed. Yeah. Um, 
which are the black-footed um, Spanish pigs yeah. that eat exclusively acorns. Yeah. Um, Jamón Serrano, they also eat acorns, but they have, like, a little bit of a more varied diet. Um, and so Jamón Serrano is going to be really nutty mm-hmm. because of that, you know, really savory and um, kind of, like, that, like, it fills up your whole mouth with that, like, yeah. super savory super <laughs> quality. Savory. Um, while the <laughs> prosciutto, which the one I have here is the Pio Tosini prosciutto, mm-hmm. which is um, from P- the Parma region. So in Italy, there's two main prosciuttos, the prosciutto di Parma and the prosciutto San Daniele. Um, and Pio Tosini kind of brings it even more like central to Parma. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are really intentional about where they source their pigs from. Yeah. And they tend to be larger pigs. And a little bit fattier, mm-hmm. so the meat is a little softer and a little sweeter. And um, and you were telling me something about the shape of this that yeah. makes it unique to yeah. other prosciutto. Exactly. So this particular um, prosciutto piotosini is the style that you would most frequently see in Italy. Okay. It's called legato, and basically what that means is rather than so after they salt the legs, and they hang them to cure them. Mm-hmm. So all of the moisture, the blood, the water, everything kind of drains out. Um, and you're left with, like, this more dense meat. Yeah. <laughs> Not to get too graphic, sorry. I know. I was like, <laughs> but that's the process. Um, and so in the States, we're used to seeing the legs are then, like, pressed. So, mm-hmm. like, the hamon like that, that you can see. Very oval or, like, a rectangular strips. Exactly, yeah. Um, but with the Pio Tosini, it's kind of cool. Um, this one's, like, sliced a little bit further in, but when you first start slicing it, it's really evident. But um, the the slices sort of, like, butterfly out, which is really cool. And then as you get closer to um, the end of the leg, you actually end up with these, like, football-sized, like, massive prosciutto slices Whoa. that are just gorgeous. <laughs> Wow. And I'm mad at that. <laughs> Who doesn't exactly. want a football sized slice of prosciutto? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, it's pretty cool, actually. The Piotosini family, they've been doing this since, oh God, I don't know exactly, but a long a time. Long time. <laughs> yeah. A very long time. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and they, so the restrictions for prosciutto di Parma, you have to age the legs for 400 days, but with this particular one, they're aged the minimum of uh, 500 days. So oh, okay. it's, like, even more time. Um, like, for instance, we, we obviously use the ones that are bone out. So mm-hmm. the bone can really impart a lot of flavor. So that extra 100 days of aging really adds a little bit of extra um, flavor to the, the product. Little, ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, yeah, awesome. it's pretty cool. Um, so s- staying on the topic of prosciutto and jamon, why is it um, – why is it so important to slice it thin? Why is that the way to do this? Yeah. Well, um, so in in this realm of, like, cured meat, you have two different main kind of sections. The jamon and the prosciutto and, like, speck, which is over there. Over yonder. <laughs> yeah. And this, um, those are all whole muscle cures. Okay. So um, basically – in comparison to the like ground yeah. salamis, which are uh, a mixture of um, sl- of meat and fat, so normally it's like pork meat and pork fat, but mm-hmm. you could have like beef and yeah. beef fat. Um, so they ground that up and they put it into like a mix, and then they exactly cure it in whatever. Yes, yeah. but these are the whole muscle, the entire muscle. Uh-huh. They're the back leg of okay. the pig, and um, kind of like a rule of thumb, which actually is applicable to cooking as well, um, is those well-worked muscles, so like the shoulder and the the leg, um, those are all going to be pretty tough because they're getting the most exercise, the animals using them, moving around, (laughs) but they also are going to have the most flavor Mm -hmm. because they get the most blood flow. So all of that myoglobin um, kind of adds to it. All that what? (laughs) The myoglobin, so the blood, (laughs) basically. (laughs) adds to that flavor um and so when you're when you're cooking it or when you're slicing these whole muscles that you know have a 
a little bit of that tough quality. Mm -hmm. One way to make it so they're really tender is to slice them really thinly against the grain. So you can see when you're cooking, you can see like little fibers. Mm -hmm. And those fibers, if you um, cut along the, the fibers, um, it's going to be really stringy and chewy. Yeah. But if you just slice against them really thinly, it's going to be that delicious texture, really soft and um, supple and delicious. Yeah. So pretty Excellent. important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so maybe um, um, let's, we have some pâtés out here, yeah. which are delicious. Do you want to explain what pâtés are? Yeah, sure. So for, pa- for our listeners who don't know what they are. Yeah. <laughs> Pâté is like an interesting thing, right? Because it's a cooked <clears throat> meat, but it's not served hot. It's served at room temperature, desirably. Mm-hmm. Um, and for our followers who follow us on Instagram and Facebook, we posted a question of what is call fat? And that's really actually an integral part of making pâtés. Um, when you're, it's it's a force meat. So basically you're going to um, grind up meat mm-hmm. and spices and you can have like vegetables, pretty much you can really do whatever you what, like with that. Whatever you want. <laughs> Go crazy. <laughs> um, and then you're going to wrap it in some kind of casein, and really call, fl- call fat is one of the best choices. Mm-hmm. Um, call, flat, bleh, call fat <laughs> is a casein that lines um, digestive organs, so like the intestines and the stomach, mm-hmm. um, and it's like this really awesome kind of like lacy um, fat, and you can use pork call fat, which has a little higher fat, or beef call fat, mm-hmm. slightly lower, but you know, still really delicious, and um, basically when you wrap your uh, force meat, vegetable, spice mixture up in that. Um, while you cook that, <laughs> up in there, <laughs> uh-huh. um, while you cook that, the the fat is going to um, render, so it's going to melt, and basically throughout the cooking process, that is going to get, like, basted in this fat, so all that flavor is coming out. Um, but, so, yeah, basically that's how you do it, and you normally cook them in, like, a, a water bath, so you could even make them at home.